Classic was undoubtedly the buggiest and weirdest of all three versions of RuneScape, so it usually wasn't too shocking when something unexpected happened. However, there have been a few odd things that have taken place which have never been fully explained. This video won't just cover glitches, but also what I would term quest and update lore. We are talking official RSC here, not private servers. I will preface this video by saying that many of these mysteries will have unofficial solutions based on third-party testimony or educated guesses. Now then, let's jump into these 7 RuneScape Classic Mysteries. Number 1. The Witch Hunters of Falador. The Witch's Potion Quest was released on April 6, 2001, and required the player to collect some ingredients for a potion, which lets them become one with their darker side, by granting them magic XP upon completion. The quest can be started by talking to Hetty in Remington. One of the dialogue options the player has is to say, I've heard you are a witch. Hetty will respond by saying it is common knowledge, and then will name drop one of the most undocumented groups in RuneScape's history, the Witch Hunters of Falador. To my knowledge, this group has never been mentioned again in any quest or NPC dialogue, nor has it been explained by the post pack from the Hedge or the game's creators. Sometimes Jagex will tie lore from older quests into newer ones like the Thing from the Sheepshare quest, which eventually made its way into the Cold War quest. In this case, it remains officially unexplained who the Witch Hunters of Falador are. Our best guess would be that this was an early title for the White Knights, since they're also from Falador. Considering that the White Knight NPCs were released on the very same day this quest was, that's very plausible, but it leads one to question why the quest dialogue was not fixed in RS2. Number 2. The Traveling Gnome Ballers In the Grand Tree, the Gnome Ball minigame can be found. In this area are several NPCs known as Gnome Ballers, which will sometimes tackle you and steal the ball. This is a pretty fun and challenging minigame. These NPCs are found within a gated field and thus can't travel outside of it. Despite this, Gnome Ballers have been found in other parts of RuneScape, specifically in two different locations, outside Ice Mountain and northwest of Lumbridge. Unlike the Ballers in the Gnome Ball field, these ones do not walk around, nor can they be interacted with. They have talk to, tackle, and attack options, but none of them really do anything. Nor does shooting a Gnome Ball or using one on them. So, how did they get there? We know they would tackle the player if the player had the ball. One hypothesis that was floating around in the RSC Preservation Discord was that the NPC teleported to the player after the player died. Notice it was actually possible to die in this minigame, as you would take some damage, around 3 or 4 hit points, when tackled, so if you were 3 or 4 HP or less, you would die. The hypothesis ventures that the Gnome Baller NPC, after killing you, then teleported to you in Lumbered because it was still finishing the tackle. If we check the world map and also think about how NPC pathwalking probably worked, this could actually be possible. The baller, after teleporting to the player at Lumbridge spawn, would understandably try to walk back to its natural habitat, which is far northwest of Lumbridge. The empty field in Ice Mountain also happened to be northwest of Lumbridge. The only problem is, some of the pathwalking doesn't quite add up. If we draw a straight line from spawn to the Gnome Ball field, we see that the Gnome Baller should have traveled west past the general store and into northern Draenor. Therefore, it shouldn't have been possible for the ballers to get into the empty field over here. Do we have the wrong understanding about their pathwalking? Maybe instead of it being a straight line, it was more like player pathwalking, which makes sense if the pathwalking logic is associated with the map and not whether the character is an NPC or not. I remember when we would kill bots in official, they would sometimes end up in the sheep field or near the windmill and get stuck there, sometimes for days. Well, maybe the same thing happened to the gnome ballers. Depending on which gates were open, the NPCs or the bots could have ended up in different fields. If a gate was open, the character would walk into that field and get stuck there. If it was closed, they would just keep walking along the path. This explains why some bots were in the sheep field and others were in other fields near the windmill, and I guess it also explains how the gnome ballers got stuck in that far northwest field. Mystery solved, I guess? Number 3. Cannoning the King Black Dragon the King Black Dragon, or KBD, was released in September of 2002. Eight months later, in May of 2003, RuneScape saw the release of the Dwarf Cannon Quest, where upon completion, players could purchase a cannon. This was a new ranged weapon that could do a lot of damage, but required a lot of steel bars to be able to use for an extended period of time. There is a theory that just after release of the Dwarf Cannon Quest, it was possible to use a cannon in KBD's lair. There is no solid proof of this, but there is a ranged guide on Tippett's old RSC site that mentions that cannons were very popular for hunting KBD. Unfortunately, no video or images seem to have survived showing it was possible. At the time of RSC's closing, the exact message you would receive when attempting to set down a cannon in the lair is, at this point, unknown. 
I have a friend's account of him trying it in official and reporting that it was not possible. In RSC Vanilla, a semi-authentic RSC private server, you are unable to place a cannon anywhere in KVD's lair, and this is the message you will see. I believe OpenRSC is currently in the process of adding this restriction. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any mention of this getting patched in any update notes from 2003 on, at least the ones that we have access to, so in this case, we just have anecdotal evidence. My take is that it was possible shortly after the quest release, but was then turned off. Number 4. Spellbook Damage Anyone who has ever played RuneScape Classic has probably become confused by looking at the spellbook numbers. Specifically, there exists a number for each spell which denotes spell strength, and in most cases it's simply not accurate. Strike spells are. Fire Strike actually hits 4s, but when you go to the Bolt spells and higher, that's where it all goes wrong. Fire Bolt doesn't actually hit 8s, Fire Blast doesn't hit 12s, and Fire Wave doesn't hit 16s. So have these numbers been wrong since the spells were released? One would think that the developers should know how much damage their spells do since they made the game. Well, there's a theory that these numbers actually were correct at one point, until a certain magic update in late 2003 that changed everything. The Mage Arena minigame. On September 22nd, 2003, the Mage Arena minigame was released, and more importantly, God Spells. These three spells, one for each god, became the strongest spells in the game and could be cast at level 60 magic. Their max hit was 18 uncharged, 25 charged. The theory is that Jagex nerfed all spells higher than Fire Strike slightly to make these new spells feel more deadly. This is another case where we only have anecdotal evidence, but in this case it kind of makes sense. Jagex nerfed other spells upon release of Mage Arena and forgot to update the spellbook strengths. They didn't want to release a new spell that was only 2 damage points stronger than Fire Waves, so they turned everything else down a notch to make God spells feel more powerful. That's my guess. Number 5. Banker Death and Respawn Back in the day, it was possible to attack and kill bankers via a glitch with the Chi Client auto rune. It was done by equipping a bow, having arrows in your inventory, and sending an attack command to the banker and the client. This would cause your character to attack the banker with ranged, I believe, which caused the banker to attack you. Jagex eventually fixed this glitch, and my understanding is that it was virtually impossible to kill a banker in RSC's final years. Oddly enough, in 2018 I witnessed a banker in Ardune spawning, meaning it had died. This was before RSC Plus had replays, so I am pretty lucky I was recording at the time. How the banker died is still unknown. I have a theory which seems kind of improbable, but let's jump into it anyway. In this clip I'm walking towards the cake stall. Notice the minimap shows four yellow dots, so that's four bankers in the bank. Forty-five seconds later, I open the minimap again and there are only three, and one player. My theory is that the player, who was a bot, so they probably just auto-logged, somehow killed the banker by spawning on top of it. If you compare the player's position with the last frame I have of the minimap before trading with Sir Diddle, the two don't exactly line up but my guess is that the banker shown here maybe walked one tile east just before the player logged in. In 45 seconds, anything could have happened. This is a weird one that we may never be able to solve, but if you have any ideas, post them in the comments. Number 6. Dragonfire Bug Fight any dragon in RSC and you will receive some dragonfire damage. Makes sense, right? What if I told you it was also possible to receive dragonfire damage even when you weren't fighting a dragon? Well, many botting players in the community, known as Shizzled, experience this exact problem. There would be banks standing or skilling or doing something else far away from any dragons, and they would see dragonfire damage on their character randomly. Our theory here is that this falls under the same category as many other bugs, PID reassignment. I'll explain. As far as I know, when you log in, you are assigned a certain player ID. That's PID. If you logged out, your PID was available for someone else to take. Specifically, the next person to log in after you logged out would get your old PID. This was a glitch that caused many bugs, including receiving random XP upon logging in, which ruined a ton of my peers, and the ability to teleport players to the underground pass. Anyway, our theory is that the player who received dragonfire damage randomly must have logged in after a KBD bot logged out. KBD bots would commonly hop worlds after killing the dragon. So when the KBD bot then attacked another dragon on a different world, the player who logged in and received the KBD bot's old PID also received Dragonfire. We have no way of proving this now, but it's our best guess. Number 7. Lumbridge Castle Basement As a new player just getting off of Tutorial Island, Lumbridge Castle is a fun place to start exploring the game. One of my favorite parts of this castle is definitely the basement. 
Even though there isn't much going on down there, I have a funny memory of my friend Jimbo scaring new players away by hanging around with a Halloween mask on. Anyway, there isn't much to this basement. You can pick up some cabbage, get some boots, and maybe fight a spider or two, but that's it. However, I'm sure many of you have noticed there is one very odd detail about this basement. Part of the wood texture seems to be warped, or sunken a bit. This inconsistent texture has puzzled me since the first time I laid eyes on it, but I always just shrugged it off, thinking it must have been an early mapping mistake by the Gower brothers. Well, it might be more than that. You see, we believe that something was once there. A furnace. To understand this, we will have to travel back to January 19th, 2001. An update to the game added anvils and Varrock, and also added the North Bridge to Lumbridge. Previously, there was just one bridge to the south. The only surviving evidence of this update is this tip.it news post. As you can see, there is a mention of a new bridge near Castle. That's Lumbridge Castle. And it states that the foundry has been moved from the castle and is now near the new bridge. I'm just learning this today, but a foundry is another word for a furnace. Therefore, we know that there used to be a furnace in Lumbridge Castle somewhere, and it was moved to the house just near the bridge in this update. What better place for a furnace to be than in the basement? In conclusion, RuneScape Classic was a very old and bizarre game, and a lot of things happened that never were documented or proof simply doesn't exist in the current day. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a lot of work to make, but I learned some really interesting things about the game by doing so. Huge shoutouts to Zeph, Sig, and Log for making this video possible. Now then, what unsolved mysteries do you have with regards to RSC? Post them in the comments and maybe we can get some good discussions going. Until next time.